Best practice for securely using API keys. Don't record yourself doing it and post that on the internet. What's up, internet? I hope you're doing well. Today's video is about automating things with Python, specifically automating the process of creating and uploading a video to YouTube. I did exactly that for another channel of mine, and today I'm going to give you a behind the scenes of me writing that code, walking you through it, and showing you how you could do something like that yourself. I've also provided a link to the GitHub repo that has the full code, which is only about 100 lines, so you can review it yourself at your leisure. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hello YouTube, this video was created by a script. Welcome to DevOps Directive. I think I could create a series of images programmatically, with a black background, white foreground, and then use something like this to read them all in and create the actual video file itself. Uh, uh, creating an image and then writing text on them. That's not exactly what I want to do. Hello. I don't know what color it is, but it looks good. Cool, 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 cool. We have 10 identical images. Google text speech. Great. Hello world. Oh, all right, hello world. Looks like this solution is actually just creating a FFmpeg command that will then get run outside of Python. This is a process call. Uh, maximum done. Hello, YouTube. Oh, all right. So we've got uh, audio and video. That is actually awesome, considering that took 10 lines of code or less. Uh, this is wild. The available packages to get stuff done are kind of incredible. Uh, uh, I wonder what the, the text speech library is going to do with those dollar signs. Uh, dollar, dollar. It certainly seems more useful to have have the independent. Oh, boy. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, I think I just caused my program to go haywire. Uh, I'm going to make some coffee and come back in a second. So, yeah. All right, we're back. we got coffee. Uh, looks like I need to enable this API uh, within a GCP project where I will actually do the uploading. I'm just going to do that and see what happens. Uh, oh, please, no. This is running on Python 2. Ugh. Holy shit. That's great. Oh, man. Two to three. What a hero. Uh, okay. It did something. <laughs> oh, I told you it was a bad Not a bad Whoa. That's awesome. Uh, okay. So that works, surprisingly. Uh, so it appears that I've reached my upload quota for the day. Um, that's annoying. Tomorrow, when my quota limit uh, gets reinstated, uh, I will attempt to upload it to my primary DevOps director channel. Uh, wait. So that was the highlight reel of me programming uh, that script to actually create the video. Now I'm going to walk through the code itself. Like I said, it's only about 100 lines, so it should only take a few minutes. There's a number of external packages that I use to help expedite the process that actually handled most of the heavy lifting. Uh, and I'll just walk through what those were and how I use them. Uh, and hopefully that gives you an idea of how you could accomplish something like this yourself. Uh, up here at the top of the of the primary file, which I named hello youtube.py, uh, we're importing all these packages. So we have CV2, that's the OpenCV uh, computer vision package. Glob, we use to actually uh, look at the file system and get the file names uh, of the various images that we're creating. Subprocess allows us to call out to a subshell. Uh, so in this case, we're actually calling out to a program called FFmpeg uh, to do to combine our video and audio files. Uh, Arg parse I'm using because YouTube is expecting the arguments to be input via the API as this namespace type. Uh, this HTTP, HTTP error uh, import is needed from the upload code, the sample code that I got from Google. GTTS is the Google text-to-speech package. And then Pillow uh, is, a, is a package for dealing with images, uh, manipulating images. And then this upload video uh, file is the one that I actually copied off the, the YouTube site. And it provides a couple of methods, the get authenticated service and initialize upload methods that I call uh, at the very end once I have my video file and I'm ready to uh, upload it. Great. So there's five, one, two, three, four, five main functions that I wrote. And then I call the sixth one that uh, I copied from the Google site. Uh, the first one is it takes in a, a background image. It takes in the input string that you would like to animate on one line, uh, as well as where you want that line to start and which frame in the video you want that to start at. Uh, because I'm running this multiple times for each line that I'm animating. And so I want to know where in the screen I should display that, as well as where in the video clip it should go when I actually stitch it all together. Uh, other than that, I'm setting a, a font and a font size, providing it uh, the input string and appending that dollar sign to the front to make it look more like a terminal, and then essentially just running the, uh, the, the basic pillow command to take that image and write a, a piece of text onto it and saving it off uh, as a file. I did use this f string interpolation here within Python. It's a nice way to uh, take a, a hard coded string and append a variable content with inside of it. And so what I'm saying here is that uh, for the ith 
letter or character in the input string uh, plus whatever my start frame was for this line. Uh, I'm going to put that into a string with five digits, so it'll left pad zeros. So for example, if this was string number two, it would say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002 uh, into the file name itself. And that gives me a nice ordering uh, of those frames within my file name such that later I can stitch them together in an orderly fashion. So that's the, the first function here. The second function uh, is just using this glob package to actually grab all of the PNG image files within my uh, content files directory that I created uh, and returning those in a sorted order and building up a list, a Python list of these uh, object pointers that I will then uh, feed into uh, the, the OpenCV library to, to create the video itself. The next one takes that list that I just created in the previous function uh, as an input and uses this CV2 video writer method uh, using this codec. I believe this is how many frames per second and the size of the frame, which I specified as an input, uh, you'll see down below and actually creates the video file itself. So the output of this is a file, uh, an, a .avi video file with no audio uh, that plays just fine and contains the, the full visual content that you saw in that video. I then had the video file and I needed to move on to the audio piece. The Google text-to-speech library or package made that super easy to do. I took my full set of input strings, which is a list of strings, and I uh, concatenated them together using this uh, empty string dot join method. Uh, so that takes each of the items in that list and appends or concatenates them with a empty string in between. So I could change that and put a non-empty string there or a comma, let's say, and then I would have a single string with a comma between each of the items that were in the list beforehand. At this point, I had a video file and an audio file. I needed to combine the two. The easiest way that I found to do that was to call an external uh, piece of software called FFmpeg. It's actually not a Python library. And because I'm not calling it from within Python, I'm using this subprocess.call uh, method, which actually calls out to a separate shell and runs the command that I built in this previous line. Uh, so it's, these are just a bunch of command line arguments that you could look up uh, within the documentation for FFmpeg. I'm taking in my audio file, in my video file. Uh, there's a, a variety of flags, and then I'm outputting it at whatever file name I provide uh, here. So that's the, the full set of functions that I wrote. I then, in my main uh, portion here of the script, I, I set a number of parameters here with the all caps uh, variable names. So I'm setting my frame size, what my line height is. So each time I, I print a new line, how much spacing in the Y direction there should be. Uh, my full set of input strings. I was trying really hard to make sure the audio and the video synced up properly. The audio library, GTTS, didn't provide uh, any good functionality that I could find at least to, to add pauses or slow it down in a controlled fashion. There was a fast mode and a slow mode, but slow mode was way too slow. And fast mode was just about right. So I went with fast mode uh, and, and decided just to go with that. But I did, I was able to uh, cause the video file to slow down slightly. Uh, or sorry, I was able to make the audio file slow down slightly by adding these periods. I think it, in, it, interprets it, it interprets it when it tokenizes the string as the end of a sentence and pauses, uh, but it actually didn't get displayed. And so that kind of allowed me to uh, have a hack that would enable the file to be slightly closer to fully uh, synced between the video and the audio. So that was kind of a hack. I wish there was a better way uh, to actually handle that, but uh, given the time, I didn't, I didn't want to spend too much time uh, syncing into the, the, the micro precision of a, a frame or two off in the video versus the audio. And I think it turned out uh, well enough. I'm um, just specifying the, the file names of where I want to write my output files, uh, both the video, the audio, and then the combined. And that's about it. The rest of this is just sort of looping through my input strings, uh, getting the line position for each, calling that animate single line function that I talked about before. Uh, once I've done that, I have all of my individual frames created. Uh, so those will actually just show up as uh, individual files. So if I just go here uh, into this folder, content files, so I have uh, all of my frames. So you see tons and tons of frames here, uh, each of them with their respective uh, frame number in the file name so that when I get them uh, with this function, they, they get returned in that sorted order because I, I return it uh, as a sorted um, iterable. I take those frames and I generate the video file. I then generate the audio file. I combine the two. And so at this point I have my video file fully created and I just need to then upload it to YouTube. The actual uploading piece, the, all the heavy lifting is handled by the sample code that I found uh, from Google. If I was just at uh, YouTube API upload here, 
they provide this uh, this code here. So I, I pretty much copied this directly. The one caveat being is that this is written for Python 2, which I discovered halfway through and was frustrated by. But I found out that there's this cool tool called 2 to 3. Uh, so 2 to 3 that you can run on most Python code, and it will attempt to automatically convert it from Python 2 to 3. That includes a variety of things, the most noticeable of which is taking any print statement uh, and wrapping it in, uh, making it a function call rather than Python 2 syntax of print space uh, and then whatever you're printing. Python 3 uses print and then uh, parens because it's actually uh, calling that function and follows the, the function call syntax. So yeah, the, the uploading code itself is mostly just following this. I did have to do a little bit of uh, hackiness around the uh, video description. The sample code provided takes in all of the metadata for the YouTube video as arguments to the command line itself. And when it was calling, when it was parsing those arguments, it was stripping out all the new lines. So I, I defined all of those arguments myself into this namespace object, which is what the YouTube API is expecting to receive. And that enabled me to have a multi-line string here. Uh, and it, I, it enabled me to provide the metadata in the fashion that I wanted, um, such that it would display how I wanted in, on the YouTube video itself. Uh, so that's really it. When you run this, you get that OAuth flow where it takes you to YouTube. You select which account you want to, to run it on, uh, and then it actually does the upload. I did run into that quota issue you saw. Uh, you can only upload about four, I think, YouTube videos per day per uh, OAuth app that you build um, or OAuth authenticated flow. And so I had, I had tested it four times and then I tested it a fifth and I kept hitting this quota issue. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the summary. Uh, I'll go to the YouTube channel itself. Uh, that's the website. So this is the channel. You can see the video here. Uh, check it out. Uh, hopefully this was both educational and maybe entertaining, seeing the, the highlight reel of my four and a half hours of uh, trying to figure out these various APIs and packages and eventually succeeding in creating this thing. If you like this kind of content, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I think we'll have more behind the scenes style content of me programming and hopefully providing some uh, explanations of, of what I figure out as I develop this type of software in the future. So yeah, take it easy.